everybody, I'm Matt Hill with 9 Avenue Services. Kim Lavin with Winter Mud. David Ramson with Hot Ticket Today. This is our show, everybody. Fossil Fuel Fridays. We have a very special guest, David, here today. He flew in. He's talking at the uh, Oil and Gas Association uh, meeting up here in Oklahoma City. We have another great advocacy group. Thank you for bringing him in, by the way. Thank you very much yes. for bringing him in. Thank you for being with us. I'm glad we could be out of the Oklahoma City. His, his talk today is all about, man, your hot takes of the day. If, you, if you're not following David on, well, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, I mean, everywhere he's still allowed to be on social media, <laughs> please uh, follow him and reach out, tell him thank you for, uh, well, teaching us today, shrug it off, and let's give it to the liberals for uh, trying to beat us at this game right now, right? Yeah. So, uh, please, tell us uh, everything about yourself. Where did you grow up, yeah. and why are you here? Uh, so, I was, I was born in New York. My dad worked for Exxon, so I have, I have oil in my blood. I guess that's why I assumed at 22 I thought I could be the CEO of Exxon. It turns out I'm not political enough to do that. Yeah. Um, as you know from the speech. Uh, but so, so long time energy guy, uh, we, we've been in Anadarko, moved to Denver, uh, was at Interplus, helped build the Bakken position up there, did some private equity stuff, and, and during that path I wrote a book called What the Fuck is Wrong with Everybody Else? What They Didn't Teach You in Business School. And Great it's book. Very, it very separate from the speech, it, it's about uh, reinvention of yourself when you're probably headed down the wrong path. Because the answer to the question is actually, you're what's wrong with everybody else, and you, you need to embrace that. Well, you have a good point there that oftentimes it's myself, but there's nothing wrong with the oil and gas industry no. at all. No. You know, that's something that you are so unapologetic about is our industry. I mean, Ken and I, which only in Alliance, yeah, we way. highlight people, it's why we do the show, people like you that come in and are leaders in our oil and gas business, and that, man, he's flying around to talk to your group about what he knows and believes in, and can teach you uh, what to invest in and, and how to think about it, going, and, going all the way. And every group, not just oil and gas, guys, if you're a wind guy, you want to talk to this guy, if you're a solar guy, if you're a complete off-the-grid green guy, have this guy come talk to you on it. I mean, that's... Or kick you in the pants. <laughs> yeah. So be prepared on what you're going to hear, but it's politically and professionally correct, especially after the day of week. That's awesome. awesome. That's can, right. can you give me just a couple yeah. minutes about what you want to tell people out there? Your, your hot take of the day is all about, I mean, like Trisha last, you know, a couple days ago, and the Petro Nerds, I mean, what, what else? You know, who are you talking to, to and, and what about? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole platform to me is really the counterpoint to the narrative. And I think, I think we get shoved a narrative that we don't necessarily think about. So I'll give some examples. Um, a lot of people in Colorado love the Tesla. I think the Tesla is probably the greatest car. Do I think that the company is valued properly? No. But in Colorado, 45% of the electricity on the grid is generated from coal. So when you plug in your Tesla, 45% of that electricity is coal. And they're not including that in the CO2 emissions that are being created. When you create a solar panel, you use quartz and you use an electric arc furnace which is hugely energy intensive, and most of them are made in China, where 74% of the electricity, electricity generated there is from coal power plants. Mm -hmm. And so we don't accept or embrace the trade-offs, and the, the reality is the U.S. produces or consumes 20 million barrels a day, of which 14 million is consumed in transportation. So if you're gonna move 100% electric, it means you need to replace 14 million barrels a day with natural gas, with nuclear, with coal, with wind, and there are trade-offs for all that activity, and I don't think we talk about that enough. So our industry really doesn't need a pivot. We provide the energy to, I mean, supply all the electricity we need in the world for natural gas for us and oil. So it, we're just moving the power around. Absolutely. So right now we're asking China to start, you know, making our path. Well, and, and we're we're reliable and affordable. And, and so, you know, today in Oklahoma City, it's about 14 degrees. There's not a lot of wind and there's no sun in the sky. So where are we generating the electricity from? We're generating it from natural gas and from coal. No, and so I went out to that windmill and warmed up my hands just a little while ago. Thank you, Western Oklahoma. And so, so I just, again, consumers have been told that fossil fuels create emissions. 
Here's a stat that people don't think about. 14.5% of the world's CO2 emissions are created by livestock. The livestock industry is we harvest meat. So if we truly want to reduce CO2 emissions, we can have Thursday and Friday vegan days and then you would reduce animal consumption by about 20%, which would bring down CO2 emissions 3%. So there's a lot of things, but at the core, there is a business interest that is generating jobs and money. And right now, the energy industry, the fossil fuel industry, is being shunned because we don't employ that many people. And they're trying to recreate the power grid with trillions of dollars of spending that will generate a 30% profit margin for the bankers and retail people will pay higher prices. Mm. So that's, that's something I, you know, hot take of the day, guys, is something you need to follow upstairs as we're listening to you over and over again. That's, you know, you, you said it. That narrative is not really about the green energy deal at all. It's really about changing who has the money. Absolutely, and, and I think you can use Greta as an example. She didn't, you know, as someone who's built a social media platform by accident, I might have 20,000 followers. I don't have 50 million. And the reason you get 50 million is because a organization that is paying for you to be the spokesperson is pushing you to all of these things. There's a reason Greta didn't go to China. There's a reason Greta didn't go to India. She came to the United States and to Canada where people who feel guilty about us having a great lifestyle want to spend money on replacing the grid and she is the narrative that they're pushing forward. If you truly want to stop CO2, we have to reduce the amount of coal-fired electricity uh, that's generated in Asia, which means that we should be investing in wind and solar in Asia in, in place of coal. I don't think they want it over there. And well, they're, they're doing coal plants daily. Yeah, other places want to be, uh, other places want to feel guilty about all the things that they have. We're the only ones, you know, our lifestyle in America, we're able to feel guilty because of all we have. Now, India there's did no start, other place. India did start to say they would become an natural gas state. So thank you for at least bringing that to us. But the coal plants are not going on that. Yeah. They're adding daily, daily, daily. The, the reality is in, in the 1300s, life expectancy was 30. You, you, your life stopped when the lights went down. You cooked your food over wood. And the reason we live to 80 is because of fossil fuels. The reason we can fly and live in different cities and live in climates that aren't particularly warm. Yeah, but the only climate that's acceptable for humans would be Costa Rica. The world has grown to a population of almost 8 billion because of fossil fuels. And we forget that. And the cost to consumers of changing from this is going to be extraordinarily high. So we need to have that conversation. Well, this is a conversation we're having every Friday on Fossil Fuel Fridays. David, thank you so much, yeah. uh, and you're so gracious. Yeah, thank you thanks so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Okay. Please uh, follow him. Uh, where can they Where can they follow you? Tell them. Yeah, you can head to the website www.hottakeoftheday.com, and if you subscribe to podcasts, uh, check us out at hashtag Hot Take of the Day on either Google or Apple, YouTube, YouTube. We have a little YouTube channel as well. So try and keep things fun, as you guys saw today. Absolutely. There you go, guys. Thank you. God bless. Take care. We'll see you next Friday. I've been sitting on